Sí. <laughs> That's how I got reelected. <laughs> Happy Saturday morning, viewers out there in TV land. Wait a minute. We don't say TV land anymore. We say streamland nowadays. Welcome to Sid and Marty Crofts and the Cineverse's 420 Sid and Marty Croft channel Saturday morning watch party. Woo! I'm Rob <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm Rob yeah. Klein. I work for Sid and Marty. And we're here with somebody that needs no introduction, HR Puff and Stuff. Oh, hi. Hi, everybody. Well, thank you for the introduction anyway there, Rob. I appreciate it. Well, Puff, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. And oh. I'm glad to have you here. High five. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, joining thanks. us also, we have a legendary actor, wonderful guy, friend of the Croft Company for many years, Mr. David Arquette. Uh, hey. Hi. How you doing, David? I'm good. How are you? Oh, we're great. We're, how, how great. This is Saturday morning. We're here so with Puff and Stuff and you. Yeah. Uh, things are great. You know, David, I'm really excited to tell everybody out there that you are the head bozo for the <laughs> Bozo the Clown franchise. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. it's. Uh, I've always loved Bozo. Um, we're trying to uh, bring love, light, and laughter back to the clown world. So uh, we're really excited. We introduced Jozo Bozo, who's the first female Bozo the Clown, and uh, actually met uh, Jessica Harrison, who's uh, the the Bozo behind uh, Jozo uh, through the Croft uh, world. So it's all sort of interconnected. Well, your stories about Croft, the ones that Marty has shared with me over the years, if you don't mind, I might ask you uh, to tell about uh, a few of those adventures you guys have had. Absolutely. Uh, but what we're going to do today, everybody, is we're going to take a look at three Croft classic shows. We're going to start off with an episode from your show, Puff, called HR Puff and Stuff. It's the great episode called Jimmy Who. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Classic. <laughs> Can't wait. Now, this was the last episode that aired in uh, the HR Puff and Stuff series. And uh, basically, to not to spoil anything, this is the one where Jimmy gets amnesia and everybody's got to help him remember who he is by going through all the adventures that he had on Living Island with Puff and the gang. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Should we just roll right into uh, the episode and start watching and start talking about HR Puff and Stuff and Croft history? Why not? Let's do it. I'd hey, love to. Yeah, Puff it's says, like Let's Saturday go. morning all over again. We don't have any sugar cereal though, but hopefully out there the yeah. viewers have it ready to go. You do at home, pour yourself a big bowl. <laughs> Puff, do you have a favorite sugar cereal? Oh, I have several of them, but I don't want to advertise for them because okay. I feel like that'd be inappropriate. Yeah, we don't want to get in any trouble today. No. So, you know, we just want to have good, clean fun. David, what's your favorite sh sugar cereal? You could probably oh, remember. I don't really want to advertise either. Okay, <laughs> well, you know what? But, Let's just but I, love, I love raisins in my cereal. I'm Got like, it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if I did have a sugary cereal, I'd probably have a vampire on the box. There's a hint. <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. Wow. Well, I, if I did, it would probably have some marshmallows. Oh, that's hints out there for everybody watching. So if you don't know your sugar cereal history, you can get on the uh, internet and maybe figure out what we're talking about. Oh, and one one fun fact is uh, now with the internet and all this stuff, you can actually order just the marshmallows. <laughs> what, like a whole like what? bag of the marshmallows? Yes, you can. I can just pour myself can. a bowl of pure marshmallows? <laughs> yeah. I've been eating cereal the wrong way this whole time. This is amazing. That may be the most important update that I've heard so far. So you bet. We're gonna, can you send us a link to that maybe? Yeah. And are no, they vitamin no. fortified? <laughs> I don't know. There's all kinds of stuff. I think if you freeze dry them, they get like really big. Oh yeah. Would that be considered astronaut food? Yes. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay. I'd oh. like that in a space capsule. Yeah. Yeah. Puff, have you ever th th thought about going up into space? Or I thought many times about going up into space. And one time I thought I actually did go up into space. Uh -huh. But I had just eaten too many marshmallows out of my sugar oh, cereal. Man. Yeah, you plus if my head's too big to fit in the capsule door. Uh -huh. I measured 
and um, I can't do it. I can't even get an assimilator. I would assume that making your space helmet would be very expensive because you do have a big marshmallow head and uh, be yep. extra expensive, you know? You know, I used to take offense to those kinds of comments, but you are absolutely right. Yeah. We just, I, I own it now. Yeah. We yeah. just want to be straight up, you know? I yep. mean, and I've, I've got a big marshmallow head too. So, oh, in this thank you, David. I suddenly look, don't feel so alone. You know, Bozo actually went up into zero gravity with uh, NASA when he was uh, what? when he was in the '60s. Yeah, well, we have wow. a we have a documentary coming out, and there's a clip of it of him going into space. And we also have a bunch of clowns uh, clowns in space, essentially. That's fantastic. I'd love to study how a lack of gravity affects his hair. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they had to put a whole thing on. So, oh, I bet I they did. I, I would add it to the outside of the helmet, perhaps. Yeah, so like the space helmet would have to encapsulate to make room for Bozo's hair. So that would be another complicated build for the spacesuit industry. Yeah, just be afraid that it would burn up on re-entry. That's true. Yeah. It, it's yak It's yak hair, after all. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. hey, that's a fun fact I didn't know before. <laughs> Boy, I learned so much on Saturday mornings. <laughs> what? Why is there so much yak hair used in the in the industry? It's like their hair must be very thick and special, you know? It's thick and special, and it yeah. doesn't, like, uh, absorb moisture as easily, so it stays drier. Yeah, plus it smells like yak. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yum. Yeah. Wow. Yak yak? yak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yakety yak, don't talk back, you know what I'm oh. saying? Yeah. Yaks are delightful. They smell like lavender. Somehow. Wow. Well, everything smells good on Living Island, so I understand. That's true. That true. Yeah. Oh, that's a fact. It's very fragrant. Do do the uh, the fragrances on Living Island can they talk as well, or are they a silent uh, character? Can the fragrances talk, Rob? It's a fragrance. Okay. I I mean, everything's living except maybe smells. Okay. I don't know. That's maybe pushing it too far. Yeah, that might have been something that you guys would have covered in episode 18, but that one didn't get filmed because you made a Puff and Stuff feature film instead. That's right. Yeah. Which, wow. was, which was very successful. David, have you ever seen the Puff and Stuff feature film that Marty and Sid made with Universal Studios? No, I haven't. Well, maybe that could be something that we can all watch together in the oh, future. I yeah. would love that. It's got some great music in there, too. Wow, it does. That was all written by the great Charlie Fox. Charlie Fox. And Puff, I know you're a Charlie Fox fan. Can you I, remember a few songs that he composed? I'm, I'm huge. I love his uh, theme song for Wonder Woman. Uh, he did Killing Me Softly. Oh. Uh, you know, which even though it's got the word killing in it, it's it's real friendly. Yeah, it's <laughs> friendly. It's gentle. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, nice. you know, he also did uh, the theme song for a show called Love American Style. Did yeah. you ever watch that? Wow. Uh, I, I did not. But, um, oh, you know what I did see is uh, Laverne and Shirley. Ooh, and you wrote that. I yeah. like both them gals. They're, that, yeah, that was a great theme song right there. Oh, and Love Boat. Ooh. Oh, can't forget about Love Boat. Exciting and new. Yeah, oh, yeah. Every time. yeah. The lyrics were written by Paul Williams. Uh, David, do you remember Paul Williams? He was a big 70s star. Yes, of course I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Amazing, there was amazing that amazing song. there was that amazing film that's like based on Phantom of the Opera. It's um uh, shoot. Anybody Phantom, knows Phantom of the Paradise. Yeah, oh, Phantom oh. of the Paradise. Yeah, he was yeah. amazing in that. That might be inappropriate for you, Puff and stuff, because that's you know, maybe a little push and PG. So I don't okay. know. Our 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 shows aren't allowed on Living Island, probably. Right. Which, which shows like r-rated movies i don't maybe uh, maybe maybe phantom of the paradise was pg i'm not too sure i don't know there's a section of the island where all sorts of stuff goes on that i'm not really privy to right i just run it as a, an elected official i don't uh, meddle in everybody's business I get oh it. wow yeah wow that's, that's yeah. really unique for a politician uh, isn't yeah. it i tend to I, sometimes i'm just very hands-off yeah, yeah. Uh, how's the Puffin' Stuff episode coming? Are we uh, going to be able to roll that pretty soon and uh, start taking a look at the Puff episode? Okay. Me? Uh, let me see my link. Oh, did I disappear? Ladies and gentlemen, we are going out live here for our uh, Saturday morning watch I party. know you couldn't tell, <laughs> yeah. but it's true. This is just live tv yeah. or streaming yes.
Yeah, so usually we would cut all this stuff out, but this is real. You're seeing us live, unfiltered. And David, you're, you're you're coming in from Nashville, so we're all hooked yes. up here and we're having a great time. And let's take a look at this Puff and Stuff episode. Woo! Woo! Puff and Stuff. Puff and Stuff. Let's go. Puff oh. and Stuff. Oh wait. Yeah. Wow. There he is, Jack Wild. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. Do, do you remember Jack Wilde? I do. Yeah. yeah. He's amazing, wow, well, amazing yeah. talent. He did such a good job on this show. Now, here we are at uh, Lake Arrowhead, California. This is where they did these shots. And look at that amazing boat. That is a fantastic boat. Oh, that boat is so great. Yeah. It's called the Beautiful Boat. That's the actual title for that. Did you know that? Uh -huh. I don't know that I ever knew that, but it is quite beautiful until There's... this happens. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, look at that. Now it's the evil boat. Okay. Oh, no. You know, it's so great let me... the way they've, up, like, I don't know. Look, it's me. It's you know <laughs> I got a little story to tell about the beautiful boat and the witch's boat. Um, I was looking to see if it still survived. And Bill Tracy, who's worked for Sid and Marty for 40 years, said, well, the boat wasn't even floating that well when they were shooting the show. Oh, no. So it probably uh, didn't survive too much longer after you, know, you completed your series, Bob. Is, is it at the bottom of Lake Arrowhead? We should go. Do you have a dive suit? Let's go take a look sometime. Oh, well, again, building a helmet for this head is a real challenge. So, no, I do not have a dive suit. Yeah. Well, we're gonna need a I was always a huge fan of that dance. Oh, absolutely. He made that up. Oh, no kidding. That's yeah. so wonderful. And there's Kling and Kling. Oh, oh they, they were fun. Oh, my God. There's the Vroom Vroom, Witchy Poo, and Orson. I like that they use xylophones and glockenspiels in the score. You don't hear those too much nowadays. Yeah, classic instruments. Oops. There it is. Man, oh I, no. He did all his own stunts. I yeah, look at him. Yeah. I didn't know that. He did all his own stunts. That's well most cool. most of them. Yeah. I gotta say. I did, but just that, man, that was him. For real. And there's spotted horse. Gracious, Jimmy. I almost stepped on you. Jimmy, come on, get up. This is no time to sleep. Come on. Uh oh. Oh my head. Jimmy, what's the matter? Are you all right? Hi, who are you? Huh? I'm your friend Horace. Don't you remember me, Jimmy? Wow. Yeah. Who's Jimmy? You're Jimmy. Oh. Is that my name? Well, he should just oh, listen to his own voice. You, you can tell by the accent. That's, it's hard to, hard to, you know, forget that great accent yeah. that Jack Wilde had. So, so fantastic. Do you see Spotted Horse much anymore? You know, he and I lost touch. He moved to the other side of the island. Mm. I haven't seen him in uh, quite some time. But, um... You know, he has a great reading library. Nobody knows. Yeah, he reads a lot. Who are you? Wow. See, I told you. I told you. You know who I am, Jimmy. I'm your friend Puffin' Stuff. Yeah. Puffin' Stuff. And this here is your pal, Freddy. <laughs> Who's Freddy? Jimmy, stop playing games. I'm Freddy. Surely you remember Kling and Clang. Huh? That does it, Jimmy. We're oh, he does it. see Dr. Blanky. Huh? Oh, I'm the owl. I'm supposed to say who, not you. Oh, my <laughs> gracious. Here it is. A lumpity bump. And what a lumpity bump. Look, puff and stuff. See? Right here. Ow, that hurts. Wow. Lumpity bump. Ah, uh, that's a special kind of bump. Yeah. <laughs> Regular bumpity bumps don't get you to lose your memory. No, Puff and Stuff, I'm going to give a little bit of a trivia thing here. So if it confuses you, I can kind of fill you in maybe sure. after. So uh, Sid Croft uh, was the puppeteer for Freddy the Flute. So when you see Freddy talking, that's Sid. Oh, that's so wonderful. Now, is that his voice too? No, that is not Sid's voice. Just oh. the puppeteering. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I've heard Sid speak. Yeah. 
Jimmy, please, Dr. Blinky's gonna I was lucky you. enough to get a Freddy the Magical what Fruit as a gift from Sid and Marty. You Can you tell that story? That's probably a good detailed one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, just having worked with them a few times on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Um, Make you remember. It was a gift. Wow. My br brother used to call me Jimmy when I was a kid, I think because of Puff and stuff. And, wow. uh, and so then when my brother saw that I had also had the magical fruit flute, he, <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> he said, uh, you really are Jimmy. Wow. Now, did, did your flute ever talk to you or did he kind of stay silent and just sort of, you know, communicate through ESP or something or anything can talk to you with your imagination. That's probably the quote of the day, Pop. What do you think? What's that there? Anything can talk to you when you use your imagination. Oh, for sure. Yeah. David, how did you meet Sid and Marty? Can you share that story with us? Wow. Um, well, I'd always been a fan of theirs. And um, I, think, I think when we really started to uh, get a little more friendly, it was when like a, an anniversary a DVD was coming out and we did a big, a uh, big show for it at, um, at the television museum in Beverly Hills. And we helped them sort of promote the fact that it was coming out. Wow. The Paley Center, I think that's the place. Yeah. Yeah. Radio and television. That's fantastic. Well, hopefully we can get you to share a couple of your adventures uh, with both Sid and Marty during our watch, watch party here. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I was just distracted by those people playing jump rope with my tail. <laughs> you know, uh, how, would that hurt or how was that? No, it was just pleasant because I, I was hoping they were good at jump rope because if not, they would land right on my, my tail. And that, that hurt. We're looking for the outtake. So, you know, if we find one where they kind of jumped on your tail, we'll have to let you know. Oh, yeah, they, they did that once. Ooh. Well, I, th I think that's why I was looking so nervous. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what they say? They say pain is temporary, but film is forever. That, this is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that was about 50 years ago, so I still remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, you had a memory that is sharp as a top. Oh. Yeah. Well, it comes from uh, being a politician. These, uh, your, your episodes, Puff, look absolutely fantastic to everybody watching. They really do. Yeah, these were remastered off the original master tapes. And wow. this is the absolute best versions and the best quality of Sid Marty Croft programming to date. So it's just absolutely a wonderful delight to see them on the Sid Marty Croft channel. It That's sure fantastic. is. It looks incredible. And it's so and also like fortunate that you can see all these on, on all these different uh, streaming services now. It's really going to, I don't know, make it available to the public in such a bigger way. It, this was something that uh, was one of the last things that uh, Marty worked on, and we are so proud that the channel is up and running and everybody could see these wonderful programs that Sid and Marty created. It's just, it, it, it really chokes me up to see how clear they look. They look beautiful. Looks great. You know, we should probably tell the viewers out there that this dance number um, called The Moment I Saw Your Face is actually sort of an homage to Jack Wilde's performance in the movie Oliver. Oliver. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, wow. And, and um, Sid Croft was friends with Lionel Bart, who produced Oliver and showed Sid an early version of Oliver. And Sid said, you know, we got to get him, Marty. And then, of course, uh, Marty said, we'll go get him, Sid. And then uh, Sid didn't want to travel, so I understand. So Marty went over, got Jack, and brought him back to the States to work with HR Puff and stuff. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, boy, look at Seymour's eyes. I was the, They had a sparkle to them. Oh, it was, okay. as Jack Wilde would say, it's very groovy. The, 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 yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Right. You do the roticism and everything. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Jimmy, I'm puffing stuff. Seymour is a great character, right, Puff? Uh, Even though he's on the witch's side. Oh no, it's okay because behind, yeah, we we were actually a pretty good friends. Teamwork. Yeah. Yeah. I need you to hold the bottle. 
behind the scenes. We we didn't have much animosity. He was he was okay. He was all right. Right. Uh, Seymour was played by Billy Barty, a classic vaudevillian actor Amazing. and crop well, legend. Do you remember uh, Billy Barty, David? Yeah, of course. I I got to play in a celebrity uh, baseball game that he was at uh, at Dodger Stadium when they used to do those. Wow. Yeah. What, what position did Billy Pitt play? Do you remember? No, he was just sort of there. He he had a little scooter at the time. He was pretty. Uh, he was pretty old at the time, but he was still just so wonderful, and I got an opportunity to tell him how much I loved him. I never got to meet Mr. Billy Barty, but I did see him crossing the street up here on Moore Park going into his <laughs> business or his foundation for the little people, and oh. I'm here driving by, and oh my God, there's Billy Barty, so that was oh my God. Ah. But He also he, had this, like, I don't know, like a skating rink or something on the way to Disneyland. He had wow. this, like... Oh. It's the building's still there. It looks like a like an old um like an old chateau or something. Wow. wow. <laughs> Did you talk to him at all about your fandom for Croft and the fact that you knew the Croft brothers? Uh I had I didn't know them at the time. So okay. that was way back and I but I did tell him how much I love his work and, and the work he did on this show specifically. Marty was very impressed with Billy Barty's work in a movie called Foul Play. If anybody remembers that one from the 70s. Was that the one with Chevy Chase? Uh, you know what? I, I, it's, I think so. I think so. Because that, that had the, the Barry Manilow theme song, which I never quite understood. It was a great... Mm. You know, didn't Charlie Fox write that? Well, he probably did. I know? think he did. Yeah, yeah. I, he I, do, I do remember these trees scaring me quite a bit as a kid oh yeah they are terrifying in real life too you're right to be scared <laughs> they they just refer to them as evil trees because if you were to go a little bit too uh, further with character development it might be too scary yeah uh -huh. now normally i would say you know don't don't label people it's not nice yeah but they're evil as heck okay so uh, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, watch that's out real accurate yeah 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 Oh, there she is. There she is. There's uh, Witchy Poo, who is yeah. the greatest witch there ever was. She really mm. is. She was given that title by the great Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch and the MGM classic, The Wizard of Oz. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's high praise indeed, because yeah, she, sure. she was terrifying. What a great witch, Margaret Hamilton. You could really see the influence um, on um, from that Sid Croft had on The Wizard of Oz, because that was one of his favorite movies. Oh, sure. And you could just see how he was using his love of that film to create your wonderful show. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the moving trees and that, I don't know if we ever had flying monkeys though. <laughs> yeah, that might be a copyright thing. Uh, so you guys had to do other oh. creative things. Oh, you know what though? Wizard of Oz is now in the public domain. I Whoa. So oh my okay. God. Look not, out. not the sequels, but the first book is. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, and That's and it. not not wicked. We we try we tried to put on a a play of wicked for a bunch of like third graders or fourth graders, and we got a cease and desist. <laughs> That's kind, of, that's kind of an honor, I would say, in some way, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's, no. that's cool. Now, in third or fourth grade, do those kids have have good pipes? I mean, are, can they belt out the tunes? Or do they just well, kind of squeak? Are you referring we're, to pipes as, as referring to vocal pipes? Vocal cords. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, we were doing a, docu a, like a documentary following this kid. George around, who was a director, and he wanted to direct a, a play, so we were kind of filming the process. Oh. And George uh, is actually the one who got the cease and desist letter, wow. letter and he was he was uh, very upset. Yeah. Well, like, do you, uh, you, excuse me, but do you ever have to send out cease and desist orders ever, or is that not what your mayor no, duties are? That's not what I do. As a public official, you know, the people sort of own me, so... I mean, you know, attack good taxpayers of Living Island. 
pretty much get whatever I can give them. Yep. So I'm, I never send out cease and desist letters. You're my favorite mayor of stuff. So I, oh. I just well, period. Thank you, Rob. Yep. That's a that's high praise indeed. I thought it surely would have been Johnny Grant. Mayor of Hollywood, but okay, if I'm your favorite, so be it. Ha <laughs> Woo! High three. A mechanical boy. Now, a fun little bit of trivia about uh, Witchy Poo is that she went on to do many cameo appearances in other Sid and Marty shows. And one of the great ones is on a show called The Bay City Rollers, the Bay City Rollers show, in a segment called Horror Hotel. And Billy Hayes didn't wear the chin because she didn't like the fact that the makeup took, you know, a long time. Oh. So watch for that when you're watching the Sid and Marty Croft channel. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Now, this is the classic, classic H.R. Puffin stuff uh, tune, I'm a Mechanical. Oh. Oh, it took me so long to be able to get me to do that with my eyeballs. <laughs> Rotate them around like that. I practiced in the mirror for months. Wow. I can't do it th these days. Yeah. You were all getting I, a little older, but you know, Puffy yeah. looked great. I learned, I'm like Steve Martin and Penny from Heaven, learning how to tap dance and then forgetting. Yeah. I, yeah. I knew it at one point, but I can't do it now. Yeah. 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 Well, that's okay. It's sad. Mechanical boy. Uh, now, Puff, you actually were one of the first people to really make white cowboy boots a thing. Oh, thank you. You know, I got those from an aunt, and uh, it took me a while to grow into them, but once I did, that was my uniform, basically. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's very responsible because you could have gotten a smaller size shoe, but that would just be wasteful, so you just went ahead and grew into them. I just waited. You were responsible, Puff. Yeah. My I mom, that. my mom told me I, all I had to do was wait, and then fit. Yeah, yeah. Your mom was very wise. Yeah. Oh, oh wow! Look at this. this hey, some, there's some real showmanship oh, right man. there. Oh my God. She, uh, oh, by the way, those glasses are still available from a company called Fun Inc. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, and you can get them at royalmagic.com. I'm just saying. Good, wow. good to know. She the, put that those uh, big glasses on the map. That was her thing. She owned it, and, you know, witchy you Very stylish. Oh, now, my God. What's interesting is those glasses, to me, are not large. <laughs> That's those right? basically yeah. just cover my eyeballs barely. And, you know, I've always wondered, and we were kind of chit-chatting before we started, uh, we were talking about your ears, Pop, and that's just something that I'm not really aware of where that would be, but that's okay, and I think you were saying that you're not really too sure where they are. No, I, I'm, yeah, I don't know, really know where my ears are. I yeah. know I have them, yeah. but I'm, I haven't really located them. Yeah, and you can hear David and I okay, so we're all oh, good. Oh, sure. Okay. I think I'd like no, I hear great. Dr. Blinky tested my hearing not too long ago. It's, re it's real good. Now, one thing I always wondered watching Witchy Poo is she has a half-eaten apple in her pocket. And I always was wondering if that was like a, a fashion statement or if it was just in case she got hungry. Do you know anything about that? I, well, I think that's a poison apple. And she only, you know, she deals it out in little doses because it's real, it's real poisonous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no yeah. touching, no eating. No. And she, yeah. she's put we many a princess into a deep, deep sleep. Come on. That wow. apple, but wow. uh, she never uses the whole thing at once. Wow. Well, you know, when we talk about poison apples, it makes me think of a wonderful film that Walt Disney made called um, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And there's a poison yeah. apple in that. Sure. And uh, one thing that I always remember Marty Croft sharing was when he met Walt Disney. And oh, yeah. He, yeah, he gave him some advice when Croft, uh, Sid and Marty were doing one of their shows at the Seattle World's Fair in 1963. Walt Disney was there, and apparently the story goes, uh, at least according to Marty, is uh, yeah. uh, uh, Walt came over to say hi to Sid Charisse, who was married to Tony Martin, who was good friends with Marty, and she introduced Walt to Marty. Ah, yeah. uh, and didn't he say 
Grab the wand. Did you, did you, are you going to tell him, like, what his advice was? Jimmy Zapper. Yeah, I want you to tell him. You tell him. Well, yeah, he said, um, always put your name ahead of the title. And that's why it became Sid and Marty Cross. Up and stuff, or Band of the Lost, all of that. Jimmy, she's the you know, Zapper. how awesome is that? Sid and Marty Croft present oh and all their other great shows, and just like it always says, Walt that's Disney, and, you know, yeah. that's just amazing. I considered for a time, because I was friends with Marty, I considered calling it H.R. Puff and Stuff's Living Island. But then I thought, nah, what if I don't get reelected? That would just be embarrassing. Very logical, Puff. Yeah. Now... Irony is, everybody elects me every year uh, for the last 60, almost 70 years now. So it's been a while. I should have done it. Yeah. I guess I'm glad I didn't. Well, it's like the Puff and Stuff Dynasty, which I just think is fantastic. So, you know, keep going. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. I plan to, yeah. as long as they'll have me. Whoa. There's some uh, special effects there that coming out of Witchy Poo's wand. I loved all the explosions in this show. Yeah. Was there anybody ever injured from the wand uh, that you know of, uh, Puff, or what do you know about that? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it, it does some damage, yeah. but it was pretty benign. Everybody yeah. got over it. Making movies is serious. serious. Safety first, you know, but things happen. Oh, for sure. Oh, wow. wow. The iconic in theme song sung by the boys. I'm gonna let go. my dog out real quick. Sorry. Okay, David. We're here for you. Oh, you let the dog out. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Whoop. Oh, uh, there it goes. Look at all those great characters. Look at that singing, Duckling. That's so much fun. Oh, my goodness. The boys. They were real good. This theme song just makes me want to watch another episode. Oh, me too. Well, now, we're not going to watch another episode of my show, though. You know, we're not going to do that because we thought we might watch uh, an episode from another Sid and Marty Croft show called Land of the Lost. Have you oh, ever heard of that show? Absolutely. Yeah. One of my favorites. Why are you testing? Why is that one of your favorites? Oh. Well, because I love the, the river they travel down at the beginning of the show. It's full of suds. I never knew why. It was, wow. That was oh, my cool. gosh. And, um, that was and so I, wonderful. Yeah, and I love the dinosaurs. It's got dinosaurs and sleigh stacks. Family. It's got everything. Rob, you can't get a show with much more complete than that. Well, uh, I totally agree with you. So, um, David... Um, I just was somebody who was telling me over there that there's a phone call for Puff and stuff. Uh, what? Can you take? Wow. Can you, you want to take oh. the call real quick? Oh, and come you know back what? when you can. Or? Yeah, that's probably an official uh, government okay. business, so I better take that. But um, yeah, I will see you soon, my friend. Okay. Thank you, Puff. Uh, yeah. Great to see you. Hey, great Thank to see you. Thank you so David. much. All Bye. Right. I'll, I'll be around. I just got to take this call. I'll be. All back. right, pal. All right. See um, you. You know, David, this might be a good time for you to bring out uh, our special guest and a, and, a, and a friend of yours and a colleague, and uh, I'll let you go ahead and do the introduction. Absolutely. I'm so excited to uh, invite to this Saturday morning fun, Jozo Bozo, the first female Bozo the Clown. Hi, Jozo. Hi. 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 It's so great to see you. Oh, okay. oh, oh, whoa. Wow. Do I just let it go? Yes. Yeah, kind of mm -hmm. Yes. You know, we, we, we hey. get cold. Hi. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, Bozo. How you doing, Bozo? <laughs> my good pal, Bozo. Oh, oh, it's so goodness. great to see you. Well, good morning, everyone. Well, good morning. It's We're... a great morning here at Croft. Oh, my God. It's always a great morning here yeah. at Croft. Um, I was told that you both are participating in something very, very special that's yeah. happening on Sunday. Uh, you guys want to tell everybody about it? Tomorrow yeah. we're going to be a part of the really exciting Bob Baker Day. Classic. Yes. yes. Bob Baker Day. It's down. It's in Los Angeles. It's at the Los Angeles H Historic Park, I think Yeah, it's the called. State Park. Yeah. And it's Ye really just such a brilliant event. There's like 30,000 people come out. 
you have to go to the um, Bob Baker website and you can just RSVP. It doesn't cost anything, but you have to just RSVP. And uh, we're going to be teaching people uh, a dance with uh, our friend Meadow Dances, a really wonderful charity. And uh, yeah, we have a professional choreographer as well. Jesse's going to be there. And uh, Jozo and Nunu. And, and uh, Sid's going to be there. Sid is Sid. the Grand Marshal. I is. mean, I've heard that and won an honor. And he is being, uh, he's the Grand Marshal, and his title is the grandfather of puppetry. Yeah. I mean, wow. No, no, David, you're going to be there and Bozo's going to be there too. Yeah. yeah Bozo oh my God. Yeah. Well, I yeah. hope that um, I could RSVP because I sure would love to go. You and haven't already? I know. And we've been, we've been working so hard yeah. on this uh, live stream. You know, we're now just coming up for air, but as soon as we're done, I'm going to see if I could RSVP because just like David and Jose, you said, it's a free event. All you got to do is RSVP. RSVP. It's really wonderful. They have artists from all over the world in Los Angeles that all go there and they sell their artistic goods. And, uh, Tierra del Sol, I think it is, is this really wonderful art uh, charity that's going to be right by us that um, uh, teach art to kids. Uh, yeah, so it, it's just this wonderful community, and uh, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to teach a dance to, to the kids there to a song called Rainbow Time. It's rainbow, rainbow time. time. Wow. Time to shine, it's rainbow time. <laughs> did Charlie Fox write that song? Or was that where did that come from? It was inspired know? by Charlie Fox. Okay. No, That's I, a bozo exclusive. Pretty much you <laughs> yeah. could yeah, you could kind of say like if you don't know the composer as a joke, you could say, well, Charlie Fox wrote Charlie that because Fox he kind of wrote, yeah, it. Yeah, he wrote it's everything. Actually, it's actually uh Graham Wheeler. Uh he's um Chippy, the clown court conductor. And he yeah, is really yeah. yeah, he's really he's really wonderful. His catchphrase is <laughs> wow, I that, I wish that was my catchphrase. Wee! Yeah, yeah, it that's can pretty be. good. It can, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, that's what we should do every time we come in the Croft office. I'm down for it. I'm yeah, down for so it. maybe yeah. we can make that a tradition. I'm, you know? That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so much fun. There's a whole uh, Bozo album that we have that Jozo's on and Bozo's on and Nunu and Chippy and Poncho, who's another wonderful clown and. Hiccups, who's America's um, um, Los Angeles clown specifically, who just got awarded the Presidential uh, Charity did? Medal of Honor. Yeah, he's wow. really, he does a Hiccups pizza party wow. uh, in downtown Los Angeles like, every few months. And he works with the Ronald McDonald House. There's no competition. All good clowns are welcome. <laughs> yeah, you know, you just mentioned McDonald's. You know, they have a big uh, history with Sid and Marty Croft, but maybe we'll save that for another one of our <laughs> yeah. live streams. Yeah, that was a yeah. Cool we're all up. about we're all about. There's enough division now. We all yeah. want people to come together. The unity. So come together. There, there is a theory, you know, of um, a school of fish or um, a flock of birds. That if 10% swerve, the other 90 will follow. Wow. And I believe that 10% have kind of swerved into this scary clown world or this sort of dark kind of negative aspect. So we just need 10% of the people to swerve back to the back. light, the kindness, no the love and laughter. Because Bozo has a theory. And Bozo's theory is he realized something. You know, he's Bozo, the world's most famous clown. Yes. But he realized, wait, it's not about me, Bozo. It's about all of us Bozos. It's about the Bozo in our heart. The clown in us. I'm yeah. a Bozo. Yeah. Yeah. I admit it. We're all Bozos. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's about letting that clown out and making the world a better place, a lighter place, a happier place, a sillier place for everyone. So everybody let your clown out. And Bozo also realized in Bozo land, we don't look up at people and think they're so great. And we certainly don't look down on people and think we're better than them. We look everyone right in the eye and we know that you're the greatest in your world and we're the greatest in ours. And if we treat each other that way, we're going to have a really great world. So everyone has to just readjust like a school of fish. 
Swerve, swerve to the back. sweetness and let's let's make kindness a real sweetness. commodity. I love that. That swerve is absolutely beautiful, David. And I could see just by that um, information you just told us why Sid and Marty love you so much. <laughs> They're my favorite. I love them so much. We miss Marty so much. Yeah. Ew. I do believe like when we lose people, they just sort of move on to a different room. You know, this is just one sort of level of existence so i feel that they're still around us quite a bit and they can speak to us in music and in animals and in nature so it's really uh, important to keep those people close to your heart we also recently lost paul rubens who was a really sweet friend yeah. of mine as well Pee Wee herman yep. so all of these incredible creatives who's inspired all of us it's just up to us to keep their uh inspiration alive and and uh, just uh, make the world a, a happier place. place. Well, yeah. let's all do that together with all the wonderful things that you guys are doing and all the wonderful things we're trying to do with Sid Marty Croft Pictures. So, uh, but really? you know, we should remind everybody how wonderful the next show is um, that we're going to watch. We're going to watch uh, one of the great Land of the Lost episodes. Wow. And before we start, we have a surprise guest that would like to say a few things. Ooh. And I don't think that I need to give him any introduction because I think that he can do it himself. No, so needed. let's take a look. So bear with us, everybody. Get ready. It's coming. Oh, wow. Hi, everybody. I'm Wesley Ewer. I played Will Marshall on Land of the Lost, and I'm joined by my pal Enoch, the talking sleaze deck. And, and, oh, this is my entire performance on Land of the Lost. Run, Holly, run! There's a dinosaur! <laughs> <laughs> now, Enoch was played by Walker Edmondson. And Walker, who was an amazing actor, he was the voice and the actor in the Enoch costume, but he was also the voice of Sigmund the Sea Monster. And people always ask me, well, did you guys ever get out of the Land of the Lost? Well, the episode called The Circle kind of answers that question. It's my favorite episode, and it was written to be the last episode of the first season, just in case there wasn't going to be a second season. And of course, it was written by the amazing science fiction writer, David Gerald, who wrote Trouble with Triples for Star Trek, and Larry Niven. And what I love about this episode is it deals with some very high concept sci-fi uh, themes like uh, doppelgangers and dual universes. So uh, take a watch and, and see what you think. And, and if you like this episode, if you, you want to watch more Land of the Lost or any of the Croft shows, just click on the link in the description and you can see the entire catalog of Cineverse. And, oh my God. Run, Holly, run! There's a slee stack! <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa, 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 okay, whoa, okay. whoa. Well, should uh, we be running? We've got a couple slee Oh my they're, to tell you the truth, they're actually paid to not harm any okay, of us. So they checking, won't harm us. Checking. Actually, they're in hibernation <laughs> mode. But you never know what they're could in happen. Sleep setting. We are live, you know. You know, anything can happen on a live stream. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Wesley Ur is a uh, Croft alumni, and just like you, David, are a Croft alumni, but we'll save that, that story so cool. for our next show. <laughs> okay. So should we just jump right into let's this watch. episode I'm of excited. Land of the Lost? Yeah. Okay. Yay. All right, let's do this. Land of the Lost, Dave Gerald, and Larry Niven, two epic writers, as Wesley pointed out, from the classic Star Trek television series. I love all this trivia. Wow. Gotta tell the trivia. I love it. All right, we're, we're pulling yeah, up the episode. Ooh, did you make any? No, you can't do that. You gotta stay here. <laughs> wow. Oh, it all looks so beautiful. This is pretty amazing for 1974. Yeah. Unbelievable. Now, it's pretty well known, but I have to tell the viewers out there, in case they don't know, this is its cross creation, the waterfall. He was absolutely um, really, really uh, uh, serious about using the waterfall. That's what he wanted. They tried to do it a different way. 
uh, that might have been cheaper, but Ted stay true to his vision, and he did it the way that he was inspired to do it. Stay true to your creativity, Sid Croft. Wow. Legend. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Now, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a stop motion dinosaur puppet that was shot on uh, film and married with video, uh, which wow. is how they shot the live action actors. And that was groundbreaking to merge those two mediums. And Sid and Marty did it first. And uh, it's just, it gives me goosebumps every time you think about that. Wow. And that's the grumpy hand puppet, which is about this good. big. Wow, that's so remarkable. So just as um, Wesley pointed out, David Gerald was the one that wrote the first trick up the Trouble with Tribbles, which is one of those little furry puff yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah. It was one of the more lighthearted episodes of the series. And at the time, people talked about how maybe it was not as serious as they wanted their Star Trek uh, in sci-fi, but it's actually turned out to be one of the most famous episodes because it's such a, has a great lighthearted tone. It's just like wow. Yeah. Bozo. Yeah. Mm. I wonder, does it look back? Uh, I I should probably save this for Wesley to talk about in the future, but I was told that the water didn't smell too good either. So, you know, what are you going to do, you know? Got it, what are you going to do? I know. Yeah, exactly. Don't drink the water. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now, I think my... Uh, six-year-old brain exploded at this point when they came up in the cave. Um, David, why don't you tell everybody about how you got into Sid and Marty Croft and your, the age uh, of when you started watching Croft and becoming aware of it. I think you mentioned to me it was the Croft yeah. Superstar Syndicated uh, show, yeah. correct? Yeah, well, I, I remember being able to watch Land of the Lost. That was... Uh, that was well, on its own and I got there was something else that was on its own but uh yeah croft superstars when it came on it was sort of this collection of all of their different shows and you never knew which episode was going to air and when it came on it was a surprise and you'd see all these different things like lidsville and, and uh land of the lost and uh age of Puffin stuff and all these different worlds and the what's the buggy show <laughs> there the was bugaloos. like a, uh, no the not the bugaloos the bugaloos they had that as well but there was like a a little dirt buggy uh oh <coughs> wonder bug wonder bug a wonderful wonder bug yeah well should, this might be a good time to kind of show everybody out there so this is the crop superstars logo this yeah. is a t-shirt that we actually have made for all the fans of the Croft Superstars, so if you're interested in uh, wearing your Croft and showing your pride, you can get one, absolutely. Where do I get one? Well, you know us and you're a Croft. Yeah. You know Deanna, you know everybody, so we'll hook you up. And David, same goes for you. But um, yeah. the great thing, that, as David was pointing out, is if you would look in the TV guide, um, it wouldn't say, hey, Dad, oh, today, look, Monday, HR Puffle stuff. Way. It would merely just say Croft Superstars. And it was like the roulette wheel. You didn't know what back. episode what, you were going to get. get? Yeah, mind blowing. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. Nobody can, can claim that know. kind of creativity and syndication except for Sid and Marty Croft. Are they dead? I'll share no, a little funny fact from a film that I did called Eight Legged Freak. I did a it, film called the Eight Legged Freaks it's about the giant right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. You might not want to. When the weather gets warmer, come on, let's get back. And to they the had cave. spider webs like this, and, and they made the spider webs okay, with right you. a hot glue gun and a blow dryer. Well, Whoa! <laughs> so if you're ever looking to make spider, we're giving away the secrets here. Yes, <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, you have to spread the love and the rumor, and yeah, yeah. We can't. You can't. Look at that. The Sleestack suits were uh, created by Michael Westmore, who won the Academy Award for the movie The uh, Mask, who uh, starred Cher, and then he also went on to do wonderful things with all the alien makeups on Star Trek The Next Generation. So, Star Trek lineage is so... 
Yeah. I just remember the slee stack scaring me so much <laughs> as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. The they sound really was did. scary. The fact that they yeah, moved. That, like, the yeah. I think they yeah. led to the theory that there's lizard people in the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, art imitates life, perhaps. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know. Oh. oh boy. Look at that. Oh boy. Boy, that couldn't oh have been God. good for the sleeve stack. So no. the arc of this oh to me God. is kind of like shuddering at this point. But you know what? We, they had a job to do. They had to shoot the episode. He had to it. get in the water. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Can I imagine how much the already weighed and then with the water weight? Yeah. That's, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Low. Low. Now, one thing that's kind of fun to point out is that this is uh, the first season of Land of the Lost. Mm -hmm. There was a second season, and the Slee Stacks were actually painted a day glow green. Oh, and then oh, wow. for the third season, they repainted the suits to a more sort of dark olive oh, green. Olive, it looks yeah. a little wow. bit more like a movie Lost called uh, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, so that's how we tell people that's they're in the third season paint scheme at this time. Wow. I also remember some scene, and it's just like a little kid memory in my head, but there were crystals or something? Oh, yeah. Ooh, the yeah. crystals play a big part of Land of the Lost. And right now I'm trying to figure out what crystals do what and what combinations do things. All from one episode is he said, the blue ones make you sick. Oh, okay. so, so Jojo and David, don't touch the blue crystal. Oh, look, the iridescent one. It's amazing. Make the rainbow. Right. There's a lot of rainbows in, in the world of Croft. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's so great, too, that they can do this, something like this and they're essentially using dinosaurs right you know yeah and it's and it's making you know it's scary for kids but it's not like typical stuff today where it's you know there's other things that they're making scary and yeah. uh, i just think it's so smart of them to use that because it's something that's interesting and educational in a way but uh i don't know and also they can tap into those little elements of fear it's much a, a lot like disney like disney always has this slight element of fear to get it all going i totally agree with you david very similar now, now the space back uh, yeah. i think they're just probably the best monster villain on history of television and that's just my opinion i mean it's just it's just perfection Ooh, love there's Enoch. Enoch and love the, Enoch. Enoch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're always angry. Hey, Enoch, we thought you'd be gone by now. Perfect timing for the save. Oh, oh my God, yes. Come, I will show you why. So here's a little bit of fun trivia about Oh, Enoch. here we go. Yeah. Oh, they're going to use the crystals. Whoa. You know, when you hear that drum going, uh -huh. that means they're big, heavy... Dinosaurs pounding yeah, on the way. Yeah. She jumped she in the water again. She has to keep getting in that water. Yeah, yeah. it was a rough day for Kathy Cole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just a little Enoch trivia. Uh, he wears that tunic not because they wanted him to have on a groovy sparkle tunic. I'm going to say such a good orange for him. It's I mean, really, really it, color. it brings his eyes out, you know. <laughs> but what they did was apparently uh, Walker Edmonston couldn't move in the suit, so they had to cut slashes into the stomach area wow. of the slee stack and in order to cover up the cuts they had to put a tunic on him i mean tunic for the win happy accident that yeah. worked out <laughs> wonderful when in tunic doubt, for the win. slashes on your stomach <laughs> just throw on a tunic i mean 100 percent. Yeah. i cannot leave the staging area it is as if the law of conservation of temporal momentum has been reversed mm. i cannot mm. go home yeah Although there is considerable temporal pressure for me. Enix very smart. I'm sorry you do not understand ultra-dimensional matrices. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand either. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one. But we're going to trust that he knows what he's talking about. I, I've yeah. got good trust in Enix. Okay. An object of equal mass and temporal energy. Energy. Well, that means that we can't leave here either, doesn't it? Oh, boy. Unless... No, I don't know about you, but that necklace that Wesley's uh, rocking there—that's pretty cool, right? I like that's it. I cool. like it. I was I mean, make a comment on it too. It's an odd choice it. because at the time it may have been a puka shell necklace, <laughs> but he went to the gold <laughs> necklace. What's the gold? Yeah, he might have been a little ahead of his time, I would say, Wesley. I'd say so. 
Okay. Something's happening here. This is cool. This is cool. It's her. Enoch, if I had a parachute right now, I could jump through. Wait, there is more. That's us, before we oh. fell in here. Pay attention now. Yeah. This is the puzzling part. We better pay attention, too. This is That's like the rapids important. we were on. Wow. Where's the mist for the doorway? I do not know. Now, I always I mean, wonder... Enoch doesn't know. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't know, you might be in some real trouble. <laughs> Is the bracelet Enoch has on, you think, a fashion statement, or do you think it might have some sort of a power to help There's Enoch definitely with purpose his... to that bracelet. Yeah, I don't know For if we sure. ever found that out, but maybe someday we will. How can that be? That brooch, too, or the necklace. The necklace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much. He's revealed. I do remember, I think, Will Enoch takes it from true. him at some point, and Enoch did not you like it. He kind of flipped out a little bit on the Ooh. market. Oh, yeah. wow. Don't push the yeah, Enoch. Enoch, you know, Enoch's very kind, but yeah. you don't push his buttons, you know? Always an opposite. Yeah, yeah. You can't take the kindness for weakness, you know? Yeah. <laughs> David, did you have a favorite episode of Land of the Lost that you can recall, or do you just love the whole series as a whole, or what, what, what do you think? I love the series as a whole, but I can't really, like, all of my memories are pretty much from maybe when I resaw them when the DVD came out, but oh. mostly from when I was a kid. So I wow. just have these little, like, memories and flashes. Like, this is bringing a lot back to me. Yeah. Wow. Calm down. Calm down. Well, I've been scared half to death. Land of the Lost, it's serious. I mean, those kids went through a lot, you know? Yeah. Now, of course, the uh, Rick uh, was played by the dad was played by uh, Spencer Milligan, uh, and uh, I think he has an accent. I've been told I mean, he does. He's a good girl. Oh wow! Yeah, is it? Is, yeah, it's a good girl. Weave it an accent. He's doing a pretty good American West Coast kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Took me all this time just to find my way back. But I wanted to help. I was afraid something might have happened to you or Will. Dad, where is Will? I think there's something interesting about the casting too. It's almost like, you know, they look like they could be in the Brady box. Yeah. You know, they... Well, first of all, that belt was probably borrowed from uh, Mike Lincoln and Bobby Brady's wardrobe because that that belt buckle is pretty big. And I'll tell you something: you would not want to play a valuable guitar with that belt buckle because you'd scratch the heck out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Be able to use this, family. Oh yeah. Exactly. Oh, I just remembered. Fire was the big deterrent to slee stacks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Always have fire ready to get rid of the the, the problematic slee stacks. Yeah. Give us a little protection. Exactly. Slee stack don't like fire that much. See, they don't like it. Okay, let's be careful. Come on. They don't like it poked in their noses. Fire. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't really. Either, Not a lot of but... people do. As I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, the trauma they must be going through okay, seeing the waterfall incident over and over again. Yeah, it's a stressful thing. Now, is it just me, or did Wesley's shirt get another button open? I don't know. I just was noticing that, you know, I'm okay with it. I think it's just me. Yeah, okay. But I'm not quite sure. Well, I would have just been noticing that it, you know. I'm okay with it. Yeah, okay. But I'm not quite sure. Well, I am too. I just was kind of, oh, you kind of, you know. Neither event happened. He was a teen heartbroken. The mist of the tiny doorway did not draw you into the vortex. He's got a real Sean Cassidy feel to him. Yes. Very, yes. Yeah. You seem to have fallen into space. Oh, magical show. Then how did we get here? As I said, you should not be here. Your presence here is disrupting the balance of the doorways. <laughs> I must yeah. correct that imbalance, or I cannot go home. Wow. Yeah, I'm yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, he wants to go home too. You know, I also remember, like, the fact that the mom, like, I always thought. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Okay, that was a good one about there. that. Oh, yeah, good scare. Wait, what were you saying about the mom? Just, I, I, I'm not sure. Like, are, are they separated from the mom? Like, is the mom in the real world? Yeah, we, I just remember something about really, like, oh, gosh. So sad yeah. that they don't have their mom. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Look at that. There's some hey, smoke. Uh, it's okay, you know, the sleep sack can't get through the invisible. Smoke barrier. plays a big part in Croft shows, especially on Land of the Lost. Take off that barrier. 
Totally. I mean, Enix, uh, he's working with the Marshall family to help them. Perhaps you can help me with a small problem. I presume you wouldn't be still It would be good if they came up with some of those things now. Yeah. Yeah. Invisible shield. You know. Yeah. How are you? I'm okay. That's pretty handy. I need, I would like an invisible shield. I, I mean, know. It's great. Everyone can put it. Yeah, we would use it for good. We use it for good. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But we've already fallen through the time doorway. <laughs> I'm tired of this, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. As long as he steps his shit out, if we didn't fall through the time door, we then where are we here? I've fallen through the time door a few times. And yeah. You what? You should. I've fallen like through the time nothing. door a few times. Why does oh. you, keep playing? you should really watch. Again again. Is that something that gives you a headache after the fact, or what's, yeah. what's the after effect? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely there's a... something okay. to avoid. Okay. I, I, would, I would agree. Avoid the time doorway thing. Yeah. Is there any reason why we couldn't throw a rope through there and pour it off under one of the rocks? Then it might be worth it. Yeah. yeah. Now, the one thing that I'm noticing here is that I'm really impressed with how clean Rick Marshall's uh, kind of fatigue outfit is because you think that he wouldn't be worried about it because he's got other problems like, like dinosaurs and you know, sleaze stacks, but he is into having clean change of clothes. You are there. Yeah. 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 It was also an obviously belts on the outside of your shirt tucked in. That was a very uh, 70s thing. Popular thing yeah. at the time, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I like my belt. Yeah, well, you got a nice one. Yeah. I was yeah, just yeah. thinking, like, I, mean, I don't want to break the illusion, but the actor in this costume, like, I wonder what he's seeing. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. red glow. Yeah, if they're, like, upside down and small. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, it was probably a very groovy experience for Walker and Yeah, I, I know that he was doing the uh, dialogue live. Oh. So it, and, and that was another brilliant thing that Sid and Marty used to... Not have to do looping or stuff later, you yeah, know, later on afterwards. Not. Yeah, that that's real. so amazing. I've We're had the opportunity now. to work with the Muppets a couple times, mm. and that whole experience. Whenever you work with these incredible Can puppeteers, like all here? of the Croft puppeteers, no, I cannot. it's so brilliant to watch to them and back. just. It's one of my favorite experiences as an actor, just watching a lot of the time they'll have a monitor and they'll have a mic attached to, to them, but they're playing along and they're, they're uh, you know, puppeteering in live, in real time. It's just so brilliant. Do you remember what Muppets you worked with, David? Yeah, I worked with Kermit quite a bit. I had a very merry uh, Muppet Christmas. I... Uh, I and I got to work with, with uh, Kermit quite a bit. I got to work with thing. Rizzo, uh, awesome. the rat. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Pepe the prawn. I mean, some yes. of my favorites. Bill Beretta, right? No, yeah, not. Bill Beretta, yeah. such a wonderful person, incredible Great puppeteer. Guy. I think that it would be kind of fun to remind everybody that a lot of the Hinson uh, alumni um, actually do a lot of stuff with Croft. Yeah. Uh, Drew Massey is somebody that works yes. with Muppets and Croft. And, Drew is uh, just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. All the Muppet people are, and, and so are all the Croft puppeteers. It's, uh, it's just yeah. a pretty great group that was put together by uh, it Senator sure Marty. Is. The best like artists and just human beings, like so all of them are just so kind. Yeah. I believe you have resolved the You know, I was telling uh, you guys about the well, t-shirt that right you now. could buy uh, on our know. store. And yeah. I remember when we were putting that together, together, and I'll do my Marty Croft. He was like, "It's got to be yes. good quality." <laughs> and he was, it was really cool that he was. That was the first yeah. thing. And then, and then, you know, of course, the design had to be cool, but Can that really impressed me. And that's exactly how Walt Disney was. Yeah. It's like quality yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. your Marty impression did not yes. include <laughs> any cursing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and that's of course something maybe for a another talk. But I'll try to keep it clean for the kids. Marty loved the bad water. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he was a mogul. I mean, he had to just you know make the door. Away. He's so hilarious. In, uh, we have a Bozo the Clown documentary coming out. I think it was a Star Trek line where they said, nobody pays any attention to you unless you swear every other word in the 21st, yeah. 20th century. I mean, no. It's kind of true. It's then true. Really focused. But we have a, we have a Bozo the Clown documentary, and Marty's 
has well, a know, part in it. We go back to visit him at the Croft office. Friend. Oh my gosh. With Jozo. Can you guys tell us when that's going to be any more about it and maybe the title or any more info on that project? Yeah, the title uh, we're working off of is called Send in the Bozos. Because during a circus, if something's going wrong, they'll send out the clowns, send in the clowns, and uh, they'll distract or they'll entertain until they can sort of uh, get the circus back in order. So the idea behind Send in the Bozos is that we're sending in the Bozos at a time in our, our circus of a world where we need a little... Uh, Distraction and redirection. We're here wow. for you. Yeah. You know, I was so fortunate that I knew Bozo's those show growing up, and I couldn't, uh, I'm so excited. And it sounds like Bozo's in great hands with you and with you, David. And of course, I hope someday to get to meet Bozo. Maybe I'll go tomorrow and yeah, you say hi come. to everybody. Like yeah. RSVP it would be so fun. Yeah. There. RSVP. You know, Marty is instrumental in, uh, in me meeting. Jessica Harrison, who's instrumental in the development of Jozo Bozo. She's a big because part of your organization. She sure Jessica. is. She, yeah. yeah, she worked at, uh, she worked at with Sid and Marty Croft and uh, at the offices there. And I guess we're safe for a while. Marty had discovered her at Arts Deli working. And Marty always had such a keen eye for talent and for uh, really wonderful people. And he, he, uh, he, he offered her a job to work, and then I had met her on uh, filming now, of Sigmund like and the Sea Monsters. Until we... Wow. Now, where we are, how to get that was something home. that we were going to talk, to go into a, a real deep dive and talk about you uh, being an iconic Croft we'll character in the new Sigmund. Uh, but maybe we'll save that for our Sigmund episode because that's something that I want everybody to hear. We'll get back. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that was a great series. One of the best sort of reboots I think ever done. Wow. They were just yes, such great friend. storytellers, you too. Will. I mean, to pack so, all that storytelling into this 22 minutes or whatever I it is. Go home to my time. Just brilliant. Ganactic, my friends. Ganactic. Yeah. Wow. Ganactic. We might have to say that when we sign up. Oh, here's the end theme song sung so by good. Wesley. Listen to him rocking this song written by Michael Lloyd. He's the composer that worked with the Osmonds and he used to work on, you worked on that wonderful film called Dirty Dancing. Wow. Brilliant musical talent. Yeah. Know, another one that Marty just, you know, recruited for Croft. It's like he was a magnet for talent. Totally. Sid was great too. Yeah. You know, finding Jack Wilder. He did nothing else for the talent that was enough. And look at that iconic logo. Oh, the best. Amazing episode. <clears throat> that's that's considered one of the, the strongest land of the lost, but I think they're all wonderful. Puff and stuff. Yeah. You are you ready to come? Are you done with the phone call? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm okay. I'm I'm finished. It I was. Feel uh, like I should stand for the mayor. Uh, we should probably. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, be respectful. Wow, oh, Jozo, it's great to see you. Oh, you. look at you. Wow. Oh, you're just all gussied so, up and sparkly. Somebody should get you a photo of this meeting here. Yeah, right. absolutely. I, I feel like that somebody should be you. Well, I don't yes, have my phone yeah. oh, because yeah. I'm just, you know, I, I'm unprepared. But, In another uh, world. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna sit down yeah, here. Let me, have a seat. How about this? We'll take a, a photo with our mind. Photographic okay, memory. Okay, okay, yes. There we go. <laughs> one of the ideas, now. one of the ideas with Jozo being so sparkly is that we reflect light, and that's yes. what the whole goal yeah. is. I just feel like I'm a reflection of everyone around me. I've been you know? feeding off of your yeah. energy and Puff and Stuff's energy this whole time. And David, next mm -hmm. time, maybe you can do this with us here. I'd love that. You are so dedicated. You're 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 in Nashville right now, and I hear that you're flying out for the Bob Baker event tomorrow. And that's just yeah. like that's like whirlwind excitement for you. Yeah, I had to fly back for my kids' performance today of, wow. of Mary Poppins, and then I'll be Ooh. on a plane back. Yeah, so. Wow. Uh, it's been a, a lot, but it's been a lot of fun. Now, endless bag. Bless well, you. the carpet bag. I can tell a story about that for another time, but but uh, yeah, because I actually was able to find the carpet bag for the Walt Disney Company, but that's a whole other story. Really? Yeah, but wow. I'll, I'll tease that. Now, Puff, yeah. um, you're here, and we just watched an episode of Land of the Lost, and I'm told we have another special video 
Ooh. from a Croft, Croft alumnus. Oh, fantastic. Uh, and we're going to take a look and hear what this legend, this Croft legend has to say. Yay. Okay. <gasps> there she is. Wow. Wow. She looks like Dopey. Mm -mm. Kathy Coleman. <laughs> Holly. Hi, this is Kathy Coleman, Holly Marshall from Land of the Lost. Aww. And I'm here today with my little buddy, Dopey, my pet dinosaur. Oh, my God. And uh, say hi, Dopey. Hi there. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> anyway, we're over here at Wesley's house and uh, Will Marshall. And we just all watched the episode Circle. And boy, did it ever bring back some really great memories. We uh, had a really funny one, actually, when we were shooting uh, the scene at the lagoon. Spencer, Rick Marshall, had the makeup man paint a slot machine on his chest with <coughs> like a cherry, a lemon, and a lime on it, on it, you know, on the, the board of the slot machine. And when we were filming, he was going to whip off his shirt and then dive to get the whole crew and cast all to laugh. And then we were going to dive into the pool. Well, anyway, we didn't know it, but Marty Croft was in the control room that day. Oh, my and, gosh. Oh, uh -oh. my God. He came screaming out. He had the NBC <laughs> executives with him. And we all got in so much trouble because we were wasting money. But anyways, it was fun. And we used to clown around like that all the time on the Hey! We were family. Yeah. That's what families do, right? Yeah. So anyway, back to families and traditions. Enoch taught me one. I gave him a kiss on the cheek and he shared with me, which we do believe was the first time this word was ever used on the show. But to you, safe travels, be well, and Ganactic. 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 Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> you know, I always, um, that's like uh, Lena the Lost's Live Long and Prosper. Mm -hmm. And then you grow up and you go, oh my gosh, of course it was, because the Star Trek writers worked on Lana the Lost. You know, how awesome that's is that? That's the coolest. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and coolest. you know what? And, and to Marty's defense, I mean, somebody's got to be the, the taskmaster. Somebody's you know? got to be cool. Yeah. 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 Have money yeah. yeah. You know, time is money in show business. Money, money. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> to the clown. <laughs> to Marty, especially. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, if you guys are up for it, um, we're going to take a look at uh, a great Sigmund and the Sea Monsters episode called The Wild Weekend. Um, this is the one that actually is guest appearance uh, by Jack Wilde. And Marty told me the reason why Jack did it is because they brought Jack over from England, you know, because he was yeah. English, to be in a wonderful Croft show called Sin and Marty Croft at the Hollywood Bowl. So, of course, you know, Marty had said, like, well, we might as well get Jack to do a, uh, you know, a Sigma episode. So, you know, because kill two birds with one stone, put him on the stage, put him in, a, in the, the current show that they were producing. You know uh, how to stretch a dollar, that Marty Croft. <laughs> yeah, he sure yeah, did. Yeah. Yeah. He was a brilliant, brilliant uh, businessman. So before we start the episode, we're going to take a look at another special video that was made for us by two Croft legends. So let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah. David, now, how do you feel about Sigmund and the Sea Monsters? Because, you know, you're, you know, you were in the new Sigmund. The new one. Yeah. Oh, Pretty man. Cool. I love it. Um, I love the experience. It was so wonderful to work with them. Um, and I, I, I don't know, just to, to be part of something that I loved <coughs> so much as a child was really, uh, just a dream come true. I wonder how Sigmund's doing these days. I haven't yeah. seen him in a while. Yeah. I don't I know. I him a bottle, you know, letter yeah. in a bottle the other day, but I oh, haven't heard back. Yeah. He might have trouble writing because he's got like. What are they like tentacles? Yeah. I don't know if he oh no, it. he's like super he dexterous. Yeah. Oh. I, I know he writes real well. He draws cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would know. You guys were you've been friends for years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Sigmund and I go way back. Yeah. And you know, I gotta say, I'm really happy that I'm an only child because Sigmund has such trouble with his brothers to oh, this man. day. Yeah. You know, they just, the worst. They yeah. just guys. torment him, and. uh I mean, they're, I guess they're kind of frenemies at this point. But <laughs> yeah. That's a, yeah, agreed. Frenemies. Good to say it. Here's the words of today. Frenemies and yep. Ganactic. Ganactic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I we have you have to do we have to, you have to do that. Okay, yeah, connect. Yeah. Of course, connect. 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 Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you allowed to quote lines from non puff and stuff? Other shows? Yeah. Well, I assume so. I do it all <laughs> <Okay>. the time. <laughs> I'm not criticized. I'm just curious. You know. Oh no! Sometimes when I answer the phone, I say hello. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. That's you know, Sigmund's thing, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marty used to say that when I'd ask him questions about like historic stuff with Croft, and he would kind of entertain it for a few minutes, and then after a while, he go, "You know, you got to get with the now," <laughs> and then he would cut off the, the history lessons. So, because you know, Marty was <laughs> Marty had said, you know, they're all about you know now things. Yeah, oh, know, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Osmonds were about now things too. Yeah. If you remember them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. kind of. They were a lot of the Croft theme songs. I think yeah. purple socks are going to be back in. That was Donnie's thing, remember? Oh, yeah. He would always have the purple socks. Purple. Yeah. <laughs> Purple's my favorite color. I think so Donnie. I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. I Come on. Get you and Donnie would get along. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You should call him up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet he would be happy to get fashion tips from you, Jozo. I would be willing to give him some. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I, See, I'm just happy we had, because that Land of the Lost episode was real heady. I think kids <laughs> need to learn things like the law, the law of conservation of temporal momentum. Yeah. Stuff that Enoch was talking about is, I mean, that's hardcore physics. Wow. Stuff. Real deep. Real deep. Real deep. You could stuff. see why Puff's the mirror because you're not only charming and funny, but you're so very, very smart. Yes. Oh, so knowledgeable. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, you know, it really it takes a lot of brain power to run an island where everything is alive. Yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. of resource management there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep, that's I wish. What, uh, yeah. I wish the politicians of today could understand the importance of taking care of a world where everything is living. I think they Ask should be president? watching all the Croft live streams and take the message that we're trying to tell. It's like learn from Puff and stuff, everybody. There yeah. you go. And, well, and learn from what David has been talking about of, and what you've been talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, look, David, I think you're swerved to the sweetness. That needs to be <laughs> on bumper stickers and T-shirts. Wait, I like that. I'm going to write swerve to the sweetness swerve down. To the sweetness. Kindness is the key to happiness. That's another big oh, one. There you go. We may need to call the copyright office after this and get the you know, swerve to the sweetness, you know, locked up because that's another great. That's a great sure. catchphrase, Puff and stuff. Yeah. Well, that was David's. I can't. Think well, of it that, that. you know, hey, he's, I, I, he's with us. He's with. That's he's public proud. domain now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We want so, everyone to use it. Sure. Uh, how are we doing with those uh, the videos? Okay, okay. Uh, Tom, we're, did you, you know, ever run for president? I've been the mayor for president. so long. Would you ever run for president? Oh gosh, I I tell you, Jozo, I'm so happy being mayor. I really like like where I am what right you're now. Doing, yeah. Okay. Wait, I, I, I have everybody. something. Hold on, I'll be right back. Oh, David's gonna get something. Well, you know, okay. does that mean like you know, puffy, stay gotta, in your lane, right? Well, Do what you know. Yeah. It's I not mean, broke, don't fix it. It's where yes. I feel comfortable. I guess if. People want look. The borders beyond Living Island are expansive. I mean, the world <laughs> I come from—that's that's maybe more than I can handle. So I don't know that I'd want to take bite off more than I can chew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Looks like I don't know if you could see this. Okay, David's got something here. Oh, what's that? Bozo for president. Hey! Yeah. Wow. wow. There Bozo, we go. Bozo actually ran for president against uh, George. Uh, uh, George H. Bush, oh, and wow. uh, during cool. that that wow. campaign, uh, George H. Bush called uh, Bill Clinton, I believe, a bozo, and <laughs> Bill Clinton said, "Well, he called us bozos. Well, bozo makes people laugh, and these guys have been making people cry, so they're going to be laughing on election day." So. Uh, the, uh, Arizona was the only uh, state to report uh, the amount of votes that Bozo got, and he got 21. Wow. 21 wow. votes? <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> apparently he, he may have gotten uh, over 200,000 throughout the country. Wow. Gosh. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, As the impressive. stuff we are learning here today is just gold. Clown history. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is that is crazy. I, I have a kind of a question, but David. Maybe you'll know about this and puff and stuff. Obviously, you're here; you can answer yeah. it. You're that's not you're not wearing gloves like Jozo is, correct? No, these are my actual hands. Okay, but Jozo, you have yeah. on gloves. 
Yeah. You know, they remind me of the Riddler's glove uh, from Batman. Do you are you familiar with the Riddler? Yes. Frank Gorshin? Yes. Yeah. You're a lot kinder, but you're but you're silly and fun, just like Frank Gorshin was. But you're not evil. No, 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 just funny bones. Yeah, so, (laughs) yeah, all funny bones. (laughs) Don't, don't touch Jozo or she'll be tingly. Yeah, yeah, but I, I just, I, I remember Batman, and that's kind of cool. I had to just point that out because there's a lot of Batman fans out there that love Puffin stuff. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it's the a lot style, of, yeah. the style yeah. of that old show was brilliant. A, so iconic good. American characters, Puff. That's yeah, what the, you are. I think the only thing my show missed was was some pows and blams, boom, in the screen. You know. Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess there wasn't a lot of fist fighting in, in my show, so <laughs> good. Yeah. Could have so, had a kaboom there. for a fall or a, oh, yeah, yeah. A splat. A splat. You right. did have those great uh, explosion so. looks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when the when Witchy Poo's wand went off, we could done a little splat. Right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of like karate and kung fu either, right? There was no. a, that, that would have been a good episode. Maybe. No. Yeah. Like 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 a Bruce Lee crossover yeah, episode sure. where he gets lost on the island and teaches Jimmy some like self defense with Oh yeah. yeah. Where yeah. I where I get not only I have a sash, but then I also get a belt. Ooh. for some what? <laughs> some sort of martial art. <laughs> well, yeah, martial island. arts are incredible. I yeah. uh I actually trained in uh, Yoshikai Karate, wow. and uh, I became a brown belt. I was only one belt away from being a black belt, wow. but I wow. never made it. Well, never. there's still time, David. <laughs> if you go back late. to the dojo and <laughs> that's, that's get more true. training. That's true. I do. I need to. We wow. should all take a class together. That would be that fun. That would wow. be amazing. Yeah. And, and Puff, are you a blue belt because of the yeah. session? Oh. Or is that just a mayor thing? <laughs> no, that's just a mayor thing. That's that's just ceremonial garb I wear around. <laughs> okay. Just so if people are looking for directions or some sort of tax advice, they know who to come to. Well, you, you. Yeah. We're just trying to find out the trivia and more about Puff because we all love Puff. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. we want to know everything about you. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Well, I'm an open book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> David Brownbelt, from what I understand, though, takes a lot of discipline and practice to get that it far. Did. So, you know, I can only imagine. Yeah. I kind of um, like that it's brown too. It's fun. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. It's not quite there. You yeah. know what I really want to try? Goat yoga. Yes. Well, oh. That's something that we really should do is goat yoga. Okay. Just, you know, get your stretch on. Okay. Yes. And then there's live goats yeah. just running around. They jump you on know, your back. It's really cute and really fun. I love goats. We have yeah. Bozo's Barnyard. Uh, ah. Can we invite a, them to Bozo's Barnyard yeah, and have Puff and Rob come over wow. and do and goat have, yoga with us? Wow. We recently got two goats, Spartacus and Vincent Van Goat. And... Uh, <laughs> They are fainting goats. So if they get too excited oh. or something, they get all it's stiff, stiff and they tip and over. Out. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's silly and sad, but it's also kind of hilarious. Does Vincent have both his ears? <laughs> <laughs> he does. We have to admit, we got that name off the internet. Okay. So I'm very ear centric since I can't find, find my own. Yet? Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. It's okay. I, I always that. wonder. Well, Vincent Van Gogh just sounds like just absolute classic. Yeah. 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 That's Great name. Yeah. That's They're that's fun. amazing. We just it, got a new baby cow, little mini cow. Oh. We have two little mini Highland cows. Wow. Oh, a Highland Buff, cow. So yeah, they're Buffy sort of reddish and Zorro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, so the fun. ones we got are black and white, but uh, oh, oh wow. yeah, but they are fuzzy. One, the males fuzzier than the females. Wow. Um, wow. Um, David, so you're this is all uh, on your farm in Nashville, that yeah. You, you know, how, yeah. This is, how fantastic! Did wow. you go, do you ever go? Yes. Did you ever go out there? Yes, I love Nashville, I love the barnyard, it's so fun to you know, it's really therapeutic for me. I'm really big into mental wellness, and so for me to get out to Nashville and spend some time just in the open air, yeah. it's really clean air, you know, LA is kind of a little smoggy. But yeah. well, it's better than it was. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. You, if you were here in the seventies, you'd think, "Wow, it's a... maybe it's all the electric cars we've got now." Oh, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Gozo I, I, and I, Bozo, 
Jozo and Bozo actually did a performance at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital recently, yeah, recently which was really fun month, in Nashville. It was really special. Yeah. Oh, it's <coughs> great. to meet some amazing kids <coughs> and have dance parties with them and just spread some cheer and some magic. No, yeah. you, I was wondering, you know, I, you often hear that goats will actually eat, like, if you have a sweater on or something, they like to nibble on the sweater. Have you ever had that? I've never that? been nibbled on okay. by a goat, Okay. Um, huh. but I think I'd allow it. Yeah, it would be like I'm down for a goat nibble. It would be like goat distressing on your yeah. outfit, like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, okay. Well, yeah, and then wow. you'd have a story to tell. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, we might have to like you know entice the goat to take a nibble. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll leave that to you. <laughs> well, put you know, a, put a often stuff. I mean, put a you know, cream or something on our, on our clothing, and then yeah. we'll just up and get a little in. I figure maybe if I do enough goat yoga, I too will have a digestion system of steel and I'll be able to eat tires and shoes and sweaters. Yeah. You do have to it. watch you do have to watch what you put around. You have to be really careful, especially with the mini horses. We have too and many horses. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And uh horses their 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 digestive system is really sensitive so you have to be really careful what you feed them or they can get colic and it can be Ooh, dangerous yeah. for them horses are a lot of work is it true that cows have like four stomachs they I've do heard that but um, yeah, yeah. That a real okay that is not, a real yeah, thing yeah i i know entertainment his trivia but that kind of real life stuff, i'm not too good, <laughs> not too good. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah so i need you guys to help yeah yeah well, I'll, new. if i have any yeah. questions yeah. like that i'll just send it your direct them to yeah. not yeah. Apple, well, yeah, not, and to david apples yeah. and carrots are safe apples okay. and carrots. Okay. that's what we stick yeah. with i think we direct them all to david because i'm no veterinarian <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm learning i'm yeah. just learning like but candy bars would animals. not be a good thing to feed the horse like you don't do that. It wouldn't. Well, I, I'm, I'm wondering, you know. I don't know. Uh, I know dogs can have chocolate. But yeah, I feel like horses. A horse would love yeah. the chocolate I, bar. Yeah. But don't quote me. I'm not sure. Yeah, I would say probably that would be one to probably <laughs> avoid. Just, just common sense says that. But you know, Oof, you're not really yeah. sure. I lack that sometimes. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think oh. I think we're ready for our special guests to come in and say a few things to us. Special guest. Yes. From our Croft alumni. Roll the tape. Hi, everybody. This is Johnny Whitaker. And wow. Scott Colden from the fancy show, Sigmund. Sigmund and the Sea Monsters, <laughs> which yeah. is brand new on Cineverse, the Sid and Marty Croft channel. Fantastic. Yes, we're all excited about that. All 27 episodes. What? That's right. All 27. That's great. And uh, right now, we've got our friends uh, HR Puff and stuff, and, and David good. Arquette, David along Arquette. with Jozo the Clown, and our good friend Rob Klein. Love Rob. How's it going, everybody? And yeah. uh, we're going to be watching together the Wild Weekend. Wild. And who's in that? Wild Weekend. That's with Jack Wild, we're who's another cross right along. Now. From uh, HR Puffin stuff. Little Jimmy. So what do you remember from <coughs> Scott? In that episode, I remember that uh, little Jimmy wasn't little anymore. He was this big, cool <laughs> dude with unbuttoned shirt, even smoking on break. I'm like, wow, this guy's like, I'm hanging out with like Paul McCartney or something. This is crazy. <laughs> but he kept, because he spoke with that English accent. And then he and asked that. me about all about the girls and, and what I thought about, you know, the girls on the set. And it was like, I we, to, we didn't have get you to hook him up. I, and it was just like the only girl I remember is, is Zelda. I mean Mary. I don't think you want Mary. Okay. <laughs> that would be an interesting combination. <laughs> anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. For all the rest of the episodes, click on the link down down below wherever it is. And my brother here, Scott, and the rest, we're here to to, to watch and enjoy well, thank you for watching bye everybody bye wow that was those, oh. <laughs> those, those are great guys yeah there. wow of course um we know that um johnny whitaker was the star of a show called family affair did you ever see that show i Rosa? didn't no yeah that was a show basically he was a child star and um the basically it was a show about how him and his sister 
came to live with his, his with his uncle. Okay. It was a bachelor, and he had a Actually butler. Gets two kids. Yeah, wow. exactly. And now, then just did he play, play Buffy or Jody? Uh, I believe he was Jody. He was Jody. Yeah. Okay. Good puffus. You know your yeah. TV trick. Well, you know, I remember some stuff. It's been yeah. a while, but who? <clears throat> David's going to take a, uh, a a break there, and uh, why don't we go ahead and start? Uh -oh. Oh, oh, wow! Buster, what's wrong, buddy? Okay, should we start the episode, David? And you want to come in, and then you could tell us some of your uh, stories about working on Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, then. So let's Wonderful. go ahead and start the episode of uh, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Bye, David. Bye, Buster. The Wild Weekend, uh, where it has, the, you know, the guest star, Jack Wild. While the episode's coming up, I'd like to share this with everybody, What's that? which is kind of cool. Oh! And uh, let's see here. Johnny Whitaker had a record oh. album. Oh, my goodness. And oh, this was that. called. Um, Johnny Whitaker, oh, friends. friends, yeah, vinyl. And um, for everybody out there that's trying to find this record, for years I tried to find it and never could because I was looking for the Sigmund and the Sea Monsters soundtrack. Okay. Only to learn that it is not called that; it's just called Friends, which okay. is the theme song for Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. So ah. that was, you know, they kind of threw a little curveball at yeah. the fans, you know. Sure. Right? Yeah. But there's Johnny Whitaker, and and there he is on the back uh, with his surfboard um, on the beach. And this album includes all the wonderful songs that uh, were written and performed on the show Sigma and the Sea Monsters. Very cool. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 Look Do at we that. have a record player? We can pop this in. Oh, yeah. We have we have a record player in the other room, so maybe we'll, we'll give that a listen. Ooh. That's Pretty great. The DJ. I yeah. want to get one of those and have Sigma sign it. That would be so Ooh, cool. Well, we gotta idea. track him down first. Oh, I I know where he is. I have his number. Okay, on the shell phone, we'll get him. That's the right, old phone. The yeah, phone. Phone. I just Reaching picked up my shell phone. phone. Right, right. And that's, uh, that's clever wordplay right there. Yeah. Yeah. Did Jack Wild have any vitals or any? Albums? Jack Wild did too. I am so excited yeah. that you mentioned oh. that. We'll share with everybody. This oh, is Jack. Cool. Oh. Oh, uh, no, let's roll it. <laughs> All right, we'll Rolling. look at Jack Wilde's oeuvre later. <laughs> okay, we'll get into the, the, the pop record albums, okay. perhaps briefly after the conclusion of the episode. We'll have to have a listening party on the next Ooh, April 20th. That would be really fun. Yeah, next yeah. 420, we'll have a listening, listening party. party. Oh, here we go. There it is, Dead Man's Code. It's so good. It is so good. Written by um, Bobby Hart, who was part of the Voice of Heart team that wrote all the songs for the Monkees. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. There's Johnny and Scott, and you know the fun thing about it is that they were actually friends in real life, and because Johnny had worked with Scott. They just asked him, they said, if you have any friends that you could suggest oh, wow. being on the show, and Johnny Whitaker suggested Scott Colvin. Yeah, and, you know, they didn't have to act too hard to have that bond. Yeah, I feel like a lot of casting works that way. As it should. Sometimes casting works out. <laughs> now, now, David, you got to share with us the story on how you got involved with uh, Sigmund and the Sea Monsters. Tell us. I can't wait to hear this one. Oh boy. This house is good. Captain Barnabas. Now, be a good little darling while I go to get prettied up. Uh -huh. And you, Daddy. That was a great role. I saw every heart. episode of that. That oh, was really fun. Can't, can't you take him with no, you? No, no, David, oh, there's a picture that I you autographed for, for the, the Croft office. 
and I'll, I, I hope it doesn't embarrass you or anything, but it's hysterical. You wrote, Samardi, thanks for the check, David Arquette, which I thought was absolutely classic. So that one has been archived in the Sid Marty Croft archive, and I think it's just absolutely hilarious. That was really your signature, right? It wasn't like what you do forging something or. Big Daddy. Okay. It's time for the Miss Underwater Beauty Contest oh, on the shell of the <laughs> Well, put it on, quick! You I bet I will. Mm, well, be a beauty, uh, there, there. where did you guys shoot okay, Sigma? There to listen to the new one. Oh, over, over. All right. Oh. Look, oh, uh, Bert Porpoise is bringing out the beauties. Yeah, wow, yeah. so yeah. literally the same like the locations oh, and, wow. and places Big where curves. the original oh, wow. Sigma. Wow. Sigma wow. was actually wow. shot at the wow. old Warner Hollywood lot, and one of the great epic Maybe stories was that a light out. fell on top of the cave set and burned down the sound okay, stage. So what? the Sigma oh, stage no. burned down and the Barnaby Jones stage burned down. And then... What happened was, which was so great, Stigman moved to the location of the studio where they were shooting Land of the Lost, so they got back up on production. But you'll think things happen. You know? Fire. We're back to the fire thing. Yeah, yeah. Fire's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. Buddy Epson make it? I think he did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every goal was hard. <laughs> Actually, the only thing that was damaged, from what I understand, other than the soundstage, was besides Marty. The stage? <laughs> yeah, besides the stage, was Marty Cross Rolls Royce, really oh, which, which belonged to the Beach sure Boys and trouble. Beatles. We never were able to figure yeah, out what really exactly, nice but the rubble yeah. basically damaged she's, she's, she's Marty's she's car. And uh, but you know, Marty, stars. you know, he was more concerned about the stage and Zelda. the actors, and everybody was unhurt. Hello. Oh, I don't remember me. I think it is. You know, he'd always say it's handmade. Oh, so that was like that was like the catch for Rolls Royce, for handmade cars. David, wow. do you know anything about Rolls Royce or cars or about what now? Rolls Royce cars, like Jozo was asking if they're expensive. I don't know. Yeah, you know, Bozo had a Rolls Royce. Oh, wow! Uh, and on the on the uh, license plate, it said Bozette. Oh, yeah, Bozette was. Uh, yeah, their version before uh, Jojo well, became, but she never became public. So, wow. Uh, Our but, race is pretty expensive. <laughs> oh yeah, I love <laughs> wacky races too. Talking about Saturday morning so wacky races was a really fun show. I remember that show. Which show? Wacky Racers. Uh, it was the uh, oh, Hanna yes. Barbera show. Wacky Racers. Yeah, yeah. Well, Gozo, now that you mentioned Hanna Barbera, this would be a great time to mention that it was actually Hanna Barbera that got Sid and Marty started wow. in live action television because Hanna Barbera approached Sid and Marty to make the costumes for their show called Banana Split. Um, they made the costumes. They, they were the show was a big hit, and the head of the network said to Marty and Sid. You're crazy if you guys don't develop your own show, make the costumes, and put the show on the air. And that's exactly what they did. And then Pop, that's how you were able to come uh, wow. and hang out with everybody, was sort of the like Hanna-Barbera and the Banana Split. It, they, they were certainly wow. a part of it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That is so great to hear. Yeah. There, I mean, it's when you look at the puppets up close, they, they use such interesting material. Like those those uh, strings there you know are like a leash from you, a surfboard. But I also so love the story of it. how Sid came up Blimey. with the idea initially for Sigmund well, and the Sea Monsters, where a big lump Sigmund. of uh, seaweed What's had washed up, and he had been monster. sitting on the beach, and he saw this big lump sea of monster. seaweed. And he Isn't took it and put it in his convertible it? car. No, no. <laughs> and uh, he had robot, this idea right? for this show based on a lump You're of seaweed. That may be the I best creation no story in the history of that. entertainment. Yeah. At least in my opinion. Yeah. And being, Plus, being the worst Ford, thing to do to a convertible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> being Ford 20, uh, they, 
also oh, no. often asked what his inspiration was, but they never really confirmed. I'm sort of speaking around things, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, he still has that to this day. He never grew out of that, that comfort. <laughs> Amazing thing about Sid is he lives in a place that kind of looks like this. It's this real beautiful utopia where he's got a a window above his bed that opens up so he can see the sky. He's got a tree house. He's got a garden with all um, organic vegetables, which he's been eating since the 70s, making his own food. Sid is really just such a brilliant, wonderful, creative person. Sid Croft is an absolute national treasure, and he he just lives uh, a life and, and creates things and just just absolutely magical. It's going to be so great that he's going to be at that parade tomorrow and the public yeah. can spend some time with Sid. Yes, for sure. He's just the best. Yeah. Loved Grandfather so of puppetry. And, uh, you know, Marty, one of the reasons Marty loved me so much is because he said, I was the only actor that always picked up the check. <laughs> and we have this great story. Oh, I maybe even share it for after, but we went to this concert of Andre Botticelli. And we were in uh, Miami for a convention. And uh, Andre Botticelli was playing. So I bought tickets. They're relatively expensive. We didn't have much time, so we rushed over to the place. But we only caught, like, the last few notes <laughs> of him singing. <laughs> Marty couldn't believe that we were still, like, going to try to do this. But we saw the last uh, few notes, and he was like, he got such a kick out of that. I spent so much money on these tickets, and we only heard a few notes. But luckily, he came back and sang, like, his big, uh, famous song as an encore. So we did catch one whole song. That's a great story. Uh, that's, that's hilarious. So it was really it. fun. It uh, was totally worth so it. So it was a high price ticket, but it was yeah. worth every penny because you were there with Marty and you Absolutely. made a memory of that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Classic stories. Do you guys have a favorite uh, member of the Ooze family? <laughs> Big Daddy and Slurp and Slurp. I just burp and slurp. The names alone are hilarious. Big Daddy scares you. I mean, I met him in person, and he's terrifying, for real. Wow, I love that fashion. Mm. Uh, she's sparkly. She's real fashionable. Yeah. Yeah, you and she could face them. Well, Captain Barnabas got, got captured by these guys in the final episode. Got it. Our signal is the So I don't know if he's still living with them in that cave. Why you miserable uh, last I heard he part of this? He, he now, was. No, a a Sigmund. He's still living with his family. Yeah. Sigmund. He was, <laughs> yeah, he was saving up to move out, but I don't know if that ever happened. <laughs> how, bigger cave? how do you make money as a sea monster? I think you just collect it up. You don't need money as a oh, sea monster. Okay. Or they use the uh, sea dollars. Yeah, Got sand it. dollars. He sand dollars. Sand dollars. Yeah. Collect sand dollars and spend them. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh my God, that's a great question. Well, it's variable. I don't, I don't think they have a gold standard or anything. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what it's based on. Wow. Well, well, yeah. There was a lot of shell puns on Sigma and the Sea Sea Monster. Sea Monsters. Do you know there's a volcano that's erupting right now? That is, right now? Um, yeah, that's emitting gold. Like gold like, flakes. Like for real? Yes, for is real. Is that because the world can't handle this live stream show that we're doing? Is this <laughs> yeah, probably. Happening? Where is this? Wow. 
Oh, I'm not sure exactly. I just saw it online. <laughs> I might be spreading misinformation. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I hope it's real, but you know, came from the internet, so tweet it with a little. That's kind of cool. Skepticism, I suppose. Well, I, I just think there's just too much entertainment happening in the world, and the volcanoes erupting because of this wonderful program we're doing. You can't. It's just, it's just too cool. What we're doing. Now that's Prince the lobster, who is the family the ooze's pet lobster, and Scott Colden. Uh, shared with me once that his favorite thing to do was occasionally he would get the puppeteer Prince, and and uh, he said that really meant a lot to him that you know when they weren't feeding he'd get to go and he's really getting the mouth full right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Hello there, Zelda here. Ooh, that was like very like yeah. British yes, there. Zelda here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know Barnabas it was time. like uh, a no, captain, no, but he's kind of like a pirate. So we always had this kind of piratey voice. Right. And then when through the oh, course of the show, they kind of started uh, <laughs> kind of toning him down. They found him a little scary at the beginning. The network did. Wow. So they started toning him down. But then, so when he became sort of more human in a way, um, he also had a bit of a British accent, but he wasn't from so, the United so, so Kingdom. David, how did you get told that your your character might have been a little too scary? Like, who, who broke you can kind of just tell. They didn't really necessarily come out and say it, but the okay. facial expressions. Uh, slightly started toning down my wardrobe, my performance, and you know, he became more of a silly character which was yeah funny. they got rid of the hook for a hand and yeah that was before we even started <laughs> filming peg leg. Yeah. Yeah. well you know children's television maybe you know um did marty ever discuss anything with you about maybe not so scary or or sid or anything or? no i mean uh I, yeah i think it was marty who may have told me like we have to tone but down so the a little. Over for he loves right. Well, because he, he also uh, had a kind of well, relationship with the Sigmund. kid's mother in, in our version, Eileen O'Connell. Uh, she was a wonderful actress. And, uh, and so I think they wanted him to be more uh, human in a way, like less scary. Yeah, you gotta look out for the kids. It's all about yeah. the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she ran the tater tower. Oh, yeah, yeah, she sure did. <laughs> I love that you remember tower. that. Yeah, the tater tower. It was a place that sold potato everything, pretty much. Oh, man. Yeah. I like potatoes. Yeah. Oh, who does? There's this really cool little wharf in Santa Monica, like... Um, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but it's sort of uh, in the little uh, dock area where you can uh, take your boats out or catch a ferry. And um, they just built this whole little little town there that was so wonderful. And Sid and Marty always made a little um, like cameo where they'd come out and they'd, you know, they'd be in a golf cart or something. It was really great to see them there. Wow, absolutely classic. Yeah, I remember that. They had a, a couple good walk-bys. I remember when the little girl was selling lemonade. And she's like, you want some lemonade? And they were both like, nope. That was a cameo. That's a Absolutely not. Yeah. That's classic. So you guys sounded like you had a wonderful time making that series, Sigmund and the Sea Monster, for Amazon. I wonder if that's animatronics. Wow. Jill's or... I'm very impressed. Animatronics, yeah. yeah. It's probably like an RC car just going across there. But, you know. I don't know. That's sand. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking that that would be expensive. They would just be thinking of Wow. Uh -oh. Now, this music that you hear uh, is done by uh, Michael Lloyd, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, used to produce, like, the Osmonds. He composed all of this stuff on an old 70s uh, synthesizer called a Moog, oh, which wow. are very, very valuable. David, have you ever heard of the Moog synthesizers before? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have a theremin made by Moog as well. Uh, yeah. Theremin's, theremin's like the, yeah, it's like the iconic sort of, like, 
Yeah, we have a whole album we're working on. So yeah, but be coming a theremin out soon. album? What 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 kind of money does a theremin cost? I can't imagine that like Guitar Center like you know carries those. You know where do you get a theremin? I got it years ago, but it's signed by Moog, the actual inventor. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I have a musician friend who owns one, and it's real fun. I, I try to play with it every time I go over there. Because you just wave your hand, and you can make time. Yeah, how does it work? Well, yeah. I think wow. it senses It works. Up. There's like a, a metal Please, rod that sticks gone. up that controls yeah. the pitch. And then there's a circular rod connected to it that no, controls the volume. Like that. So you use the volume and the pitch wow. to sort of uh, make music. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I think when you think of the theremin, I think of the Beach Boys song, Good Vibrations. That's a yeah. good song to maybe go and listen to to learn what a theremin sounds like. Well, speaking of that kind of music, we, uh, Bozo and Jozo and Nunu, did a song with uh, Laramie Dean, who's a famous surf song maker, and it's called No Bozos on the Beach. Wow. Awesome. I don't know if I agree with the sentiment, but the music's probably pretty good. Yes. <laughs> See, there he is, yep. the animatronic. That looks like they're just pulling him along, but who knows? Yeah, yeah. I, I think they just got a fishing line and yanked him across the beach. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's not much to Jack Wilde's costume there. You know, it's just uh, a vest and a pair of trousers, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's on the beach. It's his beach fit. Right. It was a simpler time. It was a simpler time, yeah. Time. yeah. And a time of great extreme denim. Yes. I remember. Lots of denim. Yeah. Lots of yeah. Yeah, all the denim. Uh, yeah, and he's got like an eagle or something on the back. Yeah, so. he's got some nice patchwork. Yeah, there. nice. And nice. that was the days of bell bottoms too, where you would use three times the fabric of current <laughs> jeans on your bell bottom <laughs> jeans. They would flare yeah, out. Now, like skinny jeans are in. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan. I like bell bottoms. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it harkens back to a, a, a different time. Yes. Yeah. So Speaking of bell bottom, Bozo also has a song called Disco Clown. Whoa. And it goes up. In the 70s, the heyday of the clown, there was a music that was really popular at the time. It was called disco. So if we want to bring back happy clowns, we have to bring back disco. Right. So it's let's say disco and clown. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I love. I actually disco. love disco. Bee Gees and yeah. their happy songs and uh, you know, feel the sunshine good band. Feel good music. Yeah, the gas well, band. I remember when the, good. when the disco version of the Star Wars Diana came Ross. out. I yes. think it was was Miko or something. That's exactly what it was. Wow. Miko. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, that I I just put that on repeat. <laughs> Back when record players, you could hit a repeat button and they'd go to the front track. Yep, they were yep. sort of programmable. <laughs> now, you guys ever heard the term jumping the shark? No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, David, of course, would know. You know, for those who don't know, jumping the shark kind of in a franchise when you kind of do things differently and kind of break the tradition. And the, and the term comes from the show Happy Days. Well, they were running out of story ideas, so they thought, wouldn't it be kind of crazy if Fonzie jumps over a shark? But sharks are salt water, and they jumped over the shark in a lake, so that was kind of... Really yeah, it was, it's TV, but, it's just yeah, fun. Yeah. But um, Miko, in my opinion, jumped the shark when they were doing Raiders of the Lost Ark disco. Because that ah. was like, Raiders was in 80, 81, and <laughs> well. disco was done. But that's a Miko track, everybody out there. If you can find the Miko Raiders of the Lost Ark disco, that's definitely worth a listen. I will, <laughs> that's amazing. I will definitely yeah. look up that. Yeah. Well, I can when, probably, you know, we'll play it for you at some point, Puff, because I think okay. I have a, the 45 of it. There's a, you, you, you'll know all of it. You know, when I was a kid, I grew up right down the street from Paramount Studios where they filmed Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley, and Mork and Mindy. 
Oh, and nice. as like a wow. eight year old kid, I would walk over alone and wait in line, and then I'd go and watch them film live Laverne and Shirley and Happy Days and Mork and Mindy. And one time wow. I got to wait afterwards, and Fonzie shook my hand. And that wow. meant so much to me, and I was so like amazed. I ran home and told my parents. And, um, and then when I got to do Scream, the film yeah. Scream, I got to work with Henry Winkler. And I told him that story and he said, well, let me shake your hand again. And he shook <laughs> it was just, he's just such a wonderful person. He may be the nicest person in showbiz. Yeah, her, he's Henry just Winkler. great. And yeah. the work Next that he's you, doing Pop, on Barry. Oh, so I would say David yeah. might be the nicest person in showbiz. He's a national treasure. David, I don't know if you heard this, but um, I actually got to meet uh, Anson Williams and Johnny Most, and they told me that John Lennon from the Beatles actually came to a taping of Happy Days. Oh, wow. And they got to meet, and I was like, why was John Lennon there? And they said he was a fan of the show. Wow. So yeah, he, cool they that? love you know, comedy. Of course. Right? Yeah, that, yeah, of course. If you I saw that lo- last... Um, that last uh, documentary they did. Yeah, it was, uh, it was awesome. Peter Sellers came by, and you could just tell they were really friendly. A lot of their references were to old comedians. A lot of their, like, uh, Bungalow Bill and Rocky Raccoon just oh, had yeah. such humor to them. Beatles are magical, just like you, Puff, and stuff, and you, Jozo. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're magical yourself. Well, I'm tr- it's just hard to keep up with you guys, but I'm doing my best. No, no, you're no, the greatest. No, uh, no, no, David, I, I'm so captivated by your Fonzie story. Was Henry Winkler in costume as the Fonz, or was he out of? When I shook his hand, yeah, he was in costume still. Yeah. So oh. technically, you might have met the Fonz and not Henry Winkler. I did. That's something that not a lot of people can say. Yeah, I'm yeah that you. is cool. I think it rubbed off because I can still hit a jukebox and it'll start playing for me. Well, that's awesome. If you ever have some downtime, maybe you can go into like jukebox repair. You know, <laughs> absolutely. Like good whack, you know, good working. I have to let my dog down. I'll be right back. It would be sticky, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Show business can be tough at some times, right? Right. Or Sky Rose. Well, Sky Rose. Wow. Uh, yeah. He was a huge influence uh, on the crops. Uh, did a lot. Started with him with top and stuff and work on everything. You, you were just hit. You you know to say Cy Rose. That's so cool. You know. Well, you see <laughs> little his, cross knowledge. Yeah, you see his name at the end of the show, and you're like, wow, he must be a big wig. Yeah, he worked on a show called McHale's Navy uh, oh, for Universal. Yeah. So he's he's the class act. And Marty here's another the little friend of ours. This is Luna. Oh, hi, Luna. Dog Luna. in the world. Oh, hi, Luna. What a cutie. Well, now, how many animals real, are real over there? Around. Wow. Hey, well, it blows those barn over there. I, yeah. He's got a whole barn like yard. A dozen yeah, animals. we really do. Do you have any ranch hands out there that help you, David? Keep, keep no. things? Or, or is it just you? Or <laughs> No, we're doing it all on our own. Your My own wife hands? is wow. really ambitious. <laughs> wow. Well, we have a, her mother, Nana, helps us out quite a bit as well. Wow. Okay. And I'll bet you the air is just wonderful and fresh out there. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a real beautiful place. Wow. Wish some of the politics are getting a little out of hand. Well, Puff, you'll have to advise us on politics yeah, because that's kind sure. of yeah. wheelhouse. Yeah. Any time. I would say, well, I'm not political, but well, we all know that's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, there's some this group called the Tennessee Three who got expelled from uh, the Tennessee State uh, uh, Congress or whatever. Hmm. And uh, uh, Justin Jones, one of the Tennessee Three, came to visit Bozo's barnyard recently. Oh, wow. So that was really an Lion. honor to meet him. He's a real hero. Yeah. Wow. He's a real good fighter. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you, but um, this was so much fun. And I loved hearing the stories uh, from you, Jozo, and from you, David. I know that we haven't even scratched the surface on all the <laughs> wonderful tales and puff and stuff. Yeah. Uh, what did you think? How do you think your show looks? Oh, my show looks beautiful. I'm so happy that they refurbed all the, the old frames and it's all looking sparkly and beautiful now. Oh, so this is great. I'm going to watch all the episodes over again. Because wow. you know what? In watching that, 
there's a lot I don't remember from 50 years ago. So this is a it's going to be a real re-education. That'll be fun. Well, you, it's a real a testament to uh, Sid and Marty for keeping these shows safe and in a temperature-controlled flow so we can have pulled them out and, and reintroduce the world to uh, the wonderful things that they'll be and the wonderful shows they made. And thank God for Cineverse, so we have access to Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Cineverse. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Cineverse. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm ready to binge. Watch. Let's binge. Let's yeah. binge it up. And, you know, they've been great partners for uh, Sid and Marty Croft Pictures, and we wanted to thank all the Cineverse people. We love Cineverse. Yeah, and, yeah. and of course, all the, the members of Sid and Marty Croft Pictures who helped make this watch party possible. Robin, who's uh, <laughs> uh, working the tech, behind the scenes for Cineverse, she's Robin. been great. Thank you, Robin. And then um, the great thing is, is that uh, you can see the Sid and Marty Croft shows on Cineverse, as well as Tubi, Roku, Prime Video, iTunes, and Google Play. Wow. wow. And, uh, wow. you know, we, and that was Marty Croft who came up with that. He said he didn't want to just go with one streaming platform. He said he wanted to get it on as many things as possible. Yeah. Yep. And that just goes to show you how forward thinking he was. And up to the very end, you know, he was uh, doing magic. Kind of chokes me up because Absolutely. we wouldn't be able yeah. to be doing this together without that yeah. vision. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so now he would party, work. Love you soon. Now, soon I got I got a question, Rob. Yes. Is there a feature where you can press a button and it will randomly give you a selection of craft shows one after ah. the other? I believe so. Huh. Um um there we're tweaking the 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 Cineverse and Marty Croft channel as we speak and things are changing every Ooh. week. So you want to keep an eye on our Facebook page and our Instagram page and also the Cineverse homepage. And they're going to keep everybody up to date with the world across. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yes. and and we have so many fun things planned. And but more importantly, everybody go out and hang with David and Bozo and Jozo and Sid Croft, and and everybody go out there and you know and let them know how much. And you know, swerve to everybody. the sweetness. Swerve yes. to yeah. sweetness. <laughs> there you go. And we got to end in our uh, uh, connected. Yeah, Should we give connected. them one. Okay, yeah. everybody hey. ready? Good. 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 Yes. Good night. <laughs> What David, would you? Yes. Oh, yeah, you too. Wow. Thank you, Jozo. Thank you, Rob. Thank, thank you, Rob. Thank you. David, you got to come thank back you, and do this again, please. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all. Stories. Great to see you, my friend. And you don't too. forget to like, subscribe, and watch all the Croft shows on Cineverse. Nothing could be better said than that. So we'll end there. And have a great Saturday, everybody. Yeah. Just happy. We love you. Let's Bye. make Saturday morning Saturday mornings again. Yes, Saturday mornings live. Oh, wow. Yes. Woo. Uh, wait. Oh, uh. Sorry, right? <laughs>